Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Houston and another Mad Cat episode of Building a Model Railway. And yes, we're still over here at Tyne Dock and um, work will continue on the platform. I have had uh, a slight issue um, with the platform and that's on this corner here where the locomotive was actually just touching that corner so I've pulled the track out slightly this way a little bit by a millimeter or so and it misses that's how tight the platform is to the track even though I allowed for a gap but um, obviously uh, it was not enough um, yeah so so far it's, it's looking good and hopefully in this episode we'll get a colour match for the platform and then we can finish off the edges and finally stick this platform in place and right on cue here comes the V2 and uh, let's just see if I can high five the driver hello driver there he goes, there he goes high five, there you go that's the first Right, I did say it was a mad cat. Get the sword messing around on the railway. Uh, you've got to be nutty to build a model railway, that's all I can say. Right, so let's continue. Before we continue with the platform, I just want to show you a couple of photographs. Um, here we have a booking office. Um, this is Bridlington Station um, booking office. and. I want to incorporate this into Tyne Dock because I can't find any photographs of the Tyne Dock booking office and, and I think this would fit in well with the building if I keep all these original features and the three kiosks and these little um, well, I don't know what these are these these are, I suppose are keeping the queues orderly I suppose but they're and, and using this as well, incorporating this. So as soon as they come up um, the underpass, they'll meet this, and this is where you get your tickets. I just thought I'd uh, show you this photograph. And here we are, Tyne Dock platform. Um, as you can see, this is what we've kind of done last week. We've painted the edges, but this trying to. Um, match the colour of this. You've got um, various different greys here. So I'm just going to pick one grey and, and, and use that. Um, and uh, hopefully that, that will look quite good. As you can see you've got different greys here and flagstones here. But uh, yeah. So I think I'll just pick out one grey and, and use that. I think I found the right colour for the platform, which is this stone wash grey. Now, to get that, I've mixed two different plastic coat paints together. This um, flat black and this flat white. So it's two parts that and five parts of the white. And um, we've got this lovely grey and I think that will look pretty neat when it's um, painted on. So I shall finish painting the platform up and I'll show you the plans that I've got on the platform. Um, it dries different colours so it's not all one colour. Uh, tarmac is not all one colour. So, yeah, I quite like the way that this is working. I have now placed the platform onto the baseboard temporarily. Um, the paint has had two coats, and as you can see, there's different shades of grey um, on the platform. Um, which gives it its unique look. So we shall leave that for now while it dries out properly and then we'll focus on cutting the uh, subway into the wall 
Um, that was a lot tougher to get off than I thought it would be. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm dampening it with a wet wipe, um, the bit that's left on the wall, and hoping that I can scrape that off without too much damage. So I'll just let that soak in for a bit and see if it comes off with the old scraper. Yeah, it looks like I can get the rest of that off without too much damage. I mean, it, it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover it over with um, another piece of card, but I don't want any lumps left behind. See, that's just peeling off lovely, that. It's just... Yeah, needs a bit more. So I don't know if I can get away with this, with other signs that I have misplaced on the layout. But, as you can see, it's starting to take the backing of the original stone sheet off. But uh, I'm not worried about that because it's going to get a new piece of card on there. So we all remember this photograph from the um, video we did a couple of weeks ago and um, this is what I'm planning to do where we've just took down that Guinness sign. Um, the handrail as well, I'm going to try and incorporate that um, on one of them, the one under the bridge where we got the the ramp um, that will have this handrail but the the other one on the on the station road side uh, where we just took the sign down, we'll have the steps going up into the station. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm going to use um, a stone style backing uh, mid-calf sheet and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to replicate this arch and stick it onto the, the stone sheet. Um, because I, I haven't got a pattern for this, <laughs> well, until now. It may look like a bunch of lines, but once I start cutting this out and gluing it to the uh, fascia card, you can see um, what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, as you can see, I've got to cut out the centre all the way around that edge here and form the rest of the um, linking stones if you like. We've got the keystone in so we've just got to do all the other stones and then that'll be ready to glue to the card. So after a few attempts I finally worked out uh, what I needed for the arches um, regarding how the stones appear, especially the keystones. Um, so all I'm doing now making sure I cut out the right ones uh, which is not easy hence why I've marked out what to cut out in green ink so I'll make sure I cut out the right parts it can get a little bit tricky with all these different lines So I'm thinking to myself, uh, was it worth it marking out all those lines just to make this arch? Now, these two lines here, I will fold them and they will go inside the um, subway. And that completes the first of the um, two arches. Um, still a little bit more detail to do to this. Um, right, so that's both arches now glued into the walls. Um, what I've actually done as well, I've added some more um, fascia stones. 
and the next step is to form an arch for the roof part of the um, subway only for the first 18 millimeters so it's just a case of placing the card on the back of the tab there and forming it round the arch then marking it and then cutting it to suit the arch so I've just got to hold that in place form it round now both arches will be the same so I'll use one to cut the other as a template so I'll hold that there cut that at that and then make another one for the other arch right so with the brick being added it finishes off the internal arch ready for connection to the um, layout but we still got one final detail to add to the front and if we look at the photograph there is some corny stones to go across the top so we shall add them in and then we'll um, see about fitting these two to the layout now I'm finishing off these arches with some matte 103 which is giving it kind of a, a sandstone colour um, on the pelmet and on these um, keystones around the arch and then I will try and darken them down to match what we've got existing with the, the stonework on the mid calf sheet but um, we shall see how it turns out As you know, matching colours is not easy, but we shall see. So now I'm just um, darkening the sandstone with some really dark grey um, matte paint. I'm only doing a couple of stones at a time and then just brushing the paint off in the direction of the grain of the stone trying to leave the cement in place what I'm doing now is I'm trying to blend in these original um, Medkov stones by dipping it in a matte 103, same paint that I used for the keystones, and just lightly, very lightly going over it, and it seems to be working. It seems to be adding a little bit of a similar colour to what we have with the original keystones. I'm not doing it overzealously, just enough to highlight sandstone on these to finish off I'm using some citadel nonel oil um, I'm just teasing this finish onto these keystones And then one of, once I've done that, I will then use the null oil to go over these stones as well. And when it dries, it kind of blends the two lots of stones together, as you can see. I think I'm happy with these 
um, blending the old and the new didn't seem to be that difficult um, I think highlighting these with the 103 and then going over the top with the nun oil kind of blends the two together these these are not quite dry yet so hopefully by the time these dry it'll match what we've got here even if it doesn't it's still uh, a close as I'll get it the tunnel position has been marked just here so what I'm going to do now is cut through this um, if I remember rightly this was 3 mil thick plywood and uh, so I'm going to have to drill a series of holes around the arch and then hopefully it'll just push through so we shall see how we get on Right, so that's one down, and uh, we've got one left to go. Um, the other one's a lot harder because it's underneath um, the bridge. Uh, so I should quickly show you where the other one's going to go. And here's where the other arch is going to go. Just there, where there's a joint in the card. So it's going to come out just about there. Um, it's in the centre of the bridge, as you can see. So it'll just be about here. Uh, this one is going to be a lot trickier to do because I'm going to have to drill it out from underneath the baseboard. And here's where it is underneath the baseboard. It's this one here. Um, as you can see it's a lot trickier to get to. I've got cables in the way and all sorts so we shall see how we get on with this one. Meanwhile back at the bench I'm making another set of handrails. Um, as you can see so the idea is um, once this um, arch is fitted to the wall and you, you look through the arch you can see the handrail and the stairs going up into the distance and that's the depth of the staircase as you can see um, the handrail finishes just about here and here is where the T-junction comes off. This one goes down towards Bolden Lane and this area here goes up to the station. So this is the T-junction under the underpass as it were. Um, but we might not be able to see it so this is all I'm going to create for that illusion. Um, obviously you're not going to see it all but I will put an LED in here to light up this um, staircase because I think it's worth um, viewing um, so yeah so another handrail um, I get the dimensions I don't think I mentioned it last, last time from the angles here is already plain to see um, you've got the 10mm flat, it comes up uh, at uh, 45 degrees, then you've got another 10mm flat, 45 degrees, 10mm flat, 45 degrees, and then we've got the 10mm at the top. And um, this is the actual handrail. It just looks like a bent wire at the moment, but once um, that is all tacked in place and, uh, and painted, that would uh, look ideal. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, both holes are cut into the wall. The one under the bridge was a little bit of a pain, um, as you've seen. Um, that one, I'm just going to create a little bit of a ramp because you can't see around corners under the bridge. So it'll just be this and then come away about 50 mil and a ramp. And then that's what we're tying to this one if you can imagine that's one entrance and the other one's here. While we're on the subject of handrails um, 
don't know if you remember when we looked at that photograph in front of the um, underpass entrances there was some handrails to protect the passengers from the main road so what I'm doing here is I'm just making up some of them handrails if I just move my fingers out of the way you can see what I mean um, you've noticed I've left the legs quite long so I can trim them down later um, it's easier to handle this way um, once the, I get this all soldered up, uh, the height I want it at from the ground level is roughly between 13 and 14 millimetres, which is roughly about the waist, or just about, uh, yeah, the waist height of a passenger. So I'm just uh, marking up for the next rail. Um, the wire I'm using here is 0.8 um, TIG wire. Um, I used this for the shields roof and um, it's a lot easier to make things like this with a more sturdier wire than the 1.5 wire that I used for the other handrail. So I can just drop that in there. That's just about right. I have to move that touch this way. That way. So what I'll do is I'll solder this one first. I haven't got my pointy hand with us here, because that would be coming handy. And then just touch that one first. And then what I'll do there is, I don't want to desolder that joint, so what I'll do is I'll just brush it across like that. So it's just a couple of milliseconds and that should be enough to, to solder that together. There you go. I'll do. Um, like so, so that's what I'm hoping to have. Once you've done one side, you've got to flip it over and do the other side because you're only relying on the copper coating to adhere to the edges. So it's, it's a must that you do both sides of the fence. And I just used some thinners for degreasing. Basically, you need to take all the flux off, so just a little bit of thinners, and then uh, it's ready for painting. That's one down, one more to go. So is I'm creating the tunnel for this section. So as you can see, the handrail's been painted, and so is the floor. So the idea is here is to fold a piece of card to go over the top of this and then back round again onto this side um, so this this edge here is the top of the floor and with this cut out we'll be able to start from that edge roll it around bring it down then mark the 28 which will then bring it back to this edge here uh, that is the plan so what I'll do is I'll cut this off and then offer it up to the opposite side mark where the steps are and then draw the lines that we have done already to the other side fit there along that edge to there so obviously what I've got to do here is mark it to suit where the steps are keep it flush with the back a little bit tricky than what I think it would be so I'll just hold that there
So that then gives us roughly the actual floor height and then once this is rolled it up we can glue it to this and then poke it through the hole. Now we shall carry on drawing the lines at least 13 millimeters worth and the rest we'll just add a brick sheet to fill in the gap so when you look through you can still see the brick arch. So moving on a little bit um, I've cut some brick sheet Notice the bricks are going that way, as you would normally see in an underpass. And uh, so we'll glue that in place, and then we can fold it to match the build that we've already done. And <laughs> like so, so it goes over the top of that. So I'm not doing it fully over the stairs yet because it's still a bit wet. So I'm just showing you as a guide of what it may look like. So I shall roll this as well. So I've already rolled that to match the cardboard template. The centre. Like so. It's a good job I kept them pieces. This is my second attempt at this. Um, the first attempt I left it flat, big mistake. You've got pre-roll um, your brick sheet first uh, and that way you won't get no creases. Um, so what happens now if I fold that up, you see there's no creases in the brickwork. Um, so when I did it the first time, I had loads of creases down the middle. So it appears to pre-roll your card first if you're gonna form an arch. So here we are we're back at the entrance and I'm just doing a trial fit. Um, this is going to be a bit complex how I put all this together. So I'm going to have to slide the stairwell in first and then at the same time put the arch over the top and then glue them together as one piece. That should go, should go because I've already had that in there once, like that. And then finally just push that home. And there we are. But we're not ready for that yet. And there we have Mrs. Dobbs heading home. Right, so that's the arch facer in along with the the steps. Um, yes, it was tricky to do. Um, at the moment, it's just dangling there, but I've supported it with a tripod just until I get um, another support in from the back, which hopefully will hold it in place. And there's a few little bits I've got to tidy up yet. Um, the card here where it's ripped, if I paint that green and it just looks like it's been um, there forever. I managed to get the tunnel walls in and as you can see, right at the back there, I've put a wall in the back. If I just zoom in, if the camera will allow me to zoom in. As you can see there, there's a sign saying platforms one and two with the arrow going to the right. Um, there is an LED in there, but at the moment I've just got a temporary light shining in the back there because the back is open. So that is uh, almost complete. I've just got to connect the LED up and I'm sure the LED will um, illuminate the underpass a bit better than this temporary light. So if I just move the temporary light out of the way, as you can see, it's not uh, the actual light that's going to light up the underpass. So you can see it's all in darkness now. 
and this is how it looks underneath the baseboard so it doesn't really actually connect up to the platforms I have now connected up the LED and um, to the Tyne Dock lighting circuit which is on its own lighting circuit not like it was before and um, as you can see it's a lot better than shining a light down the back end of the underpass and now if we zoom in the contrast is a lot lot clearer if we just zoom back out there we go and you can still make out the platform sign at the back there to platforms one and two so if we zoom out even further we can see Mrs Dobbs at the front of the queue heading home and I fitted the handrail as well so that's one of the entrances done and um, yeah it's a big difference on this wall because it was always plain and uh, it just it just look like it's always been there and as for the other entrance I've still got a lot more work to do to that um, I didn't realize how much work was involved when I was doing these entrances um, this is not glued in it's just placed there for the minute um, while I work out how I'm going to do the ramp um, it's not going to be as deep as the other one just about 50 mil or so because you can't really see around the corners from where we are I mean if I turn get my head at this angle here it's about as far as you could see into the tunnel so it'll only be about 50 mil deep as long as there's a, a shallow ramp and that would be um, more than adequate for that but um, it would still have its handrail in front like the other one right so on that note I think that's all we've got time for this week um, there, there was a, a lot of work involved um, making these entrances so maybe next week we'll have this one finished and lit up and uh, we can focus on something else for Time Dog Station. But until then, stay safe everybody, and we'll see you next time. Messing around on the railways. Bye for now. Bye.